Welcome to another edition of RCE. I am Brock Palin. You can find the podcast online at rce-cast.com. Uh, we're also in the iTunes feed, but there's an RSS feed, and you can find all the old shows there also. I have again Jeff Squire from Cisco Systems and one of the authors of OpenMPI. Jeff, thanks again for your time. Hey, Brock. How's it going? Good. Yeah, so again, we're uh, we're doing another December recording show here in the the doldrums for uh, the HPC world since it's after supercomputing and before the holidays. So getting another one in, squeezing it in so we can get in by the end of the year. Yeah, and so all of our usual contact information, you can follow me on Twitter at Brock Palin. And um, you can find those all linked off of the RCE webpage, as well as my new blog and Jeff's blog, which is actually kind of what got today's topic started. Yes, it is. So uh, I actually saw an article pointed to by one of the IBM Twitter feeds, Soft Talk blog, uh, an article comparing – well, it wasn't really so much comparing. It was talking about MCAPI, M-C-A-P-I – the multi-core association communication pro- – I got that all wrong, but we'll get it right in a minute um, – and MPI. And so, of course, that uh, tweaked my interest there, and I went and read it. And it was a very interesting article. Um, had slightly different takes on things that I did, and so I actually wrote a, a response to it, and, and there was some good discussion that came out of that. And I, I said, you know what? Why don't I just contact these guys? We should talk because there's some interesting possibilities here between uh, the MCAPI and MPI. Um, and so we said, you know, actually, why don't we even follow that up with a podcast? So here we are. We got uh, two multi-core guys on, on Skype here with us. So, Sven, I wonder if you could give yourself an introduction. Sure. Thank you. I'm Sven Bremer. I'm the president and CEO of Polycore Software, and uh, we uh, provide uh, multi-core solutions. And I'm also a founding member and um, uh um, of the Multicore Association, uh, as well as the uh, chairman of the MCAPI Working Group. Hi, I'm Ted. I'm uh, Vice President of Sales at Polycore Software, and I run the sales and business development for Polycore. And uh, I've been with Sven uh, many, many years at different companies. So uh, we uh, are interested in talking to you about MCAPI and MPI. And uh, what, do you, what would you like us to say here? <laughs> Well, actually, first, what, what exactly is the multi-core association and what is uh, Polycore's involvement with that? Sure, I, I can take that. So the multi-core association is an industry group that um, was uh, created uh, to enable the multi-core e- ecosystem. So it's, it, I think it started in uh, 2005. We, uh, Marcus Levy and I invited people to a meeting to talk about multicore, and, and the uh, turnout was uh, way beyond our, our expectation. And that's how it started, and then we, we um, uh, discussed what can we do to actually help uh, the um, multicore community, and we decided to focus on standards and um, uh, guidelines. And... Um, yeah, that, that's about it. So who all is involved in the, the MCA, the Multicore Association? What, what are your members like? So it, it's actually a, 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 a broad a group, or it, it spans across the industries. So we have semiconductor vendors, uh, and we have software vendors, we have EDA vendors, and we also have uh, some of what I would call the consumers, not being the consumers like you and I, uh, but uh, companies that would actually be the beneficiaries of using the standards. So it, it's a, and then I think we have um, uh, about seven universities. So it spans the industry and it spans academia. So, Dean, you mentioned that one of your output products is, is standards. What kind of standards do you make? Uh, software standards or hardware standards or, or what? Uh, it's primarily software, uh, but I think it touches on uh, the, the hardware in, in, in multiple places. And uh, the first one that we defined was MCAPI, which stands for Multicore Communications API. And it's now out in its uh, second version. And we also defined something called MRAPI, which stands for Multicore Resource Management API. 
And uh, we are currently working on MTAPI, which stands for Multicore Task Management API. And then uh, there is also a working group uh, working on virtualization, um, a, another one working on uh, tools infrastructure, uh, and uh, we also have one working on a multi-core uh, best practices programming guide. And if you look at the um, MCAPI, MRAPI, and MTAPI, they are basically the foundation standards of the multi-core association. And uh, you can use them individually or you can use them in combination. And if you use them in combination, some of the concepts are common between them, so you you can get some benefits that way. But they, they... they can also be used separately. So we actually want to discuss uh, MCAPI and its its components individually as a technology. Uh, what is it and what does it aim to accomplish? All right. So it's, uh, again, a multi-core communications API, and um, it's uh, meant to be uh, a light or allow lightweight implementations uh, primarily focused on on embedded systems, and if we look at the API itself, it has a, a number of functional groups. Uh, it deals with um, node and endpoint management, and a uh, a node is defined as a thread of execution, which can take multiple uh, forms. So it can uh, the, the intent is that the an implementation can run in a full-fledged uh, system with um, uh, um, a process model or down to a bare metal system that doesn't have an operating system. And there are also three types of communication functional groups. We have uh, connectionless messages, we have uh, connected packet channels and scalar channels. And a, for Messages and packet channels, uh, they come in blocking and non-blocking uh, versions. And we also have functions to deal with non-blocking operations. Um, and the, it's also important is that the standard was defined uh, to be agnostic to the number of cores, type of cores, uh, uh, the type of interconnects and the type of operating systems, or as I said, no operating systems. So it should be able to implement it in a very broad range of, of systems. So then does it require some sort of hardware support? Like you said, it focused towards embedded systems. If I was using this between units of a couple of FPGAs or something, what would be the requirement to make this work on it? Uh, yes, the standard does not um, um, imply any specific implementation, but certainly implementations need to uh, to deal with um, uh, with the hardware. And um, I can just exemplify from our we have a, uh, something called Poly Platform, uh, which is a programming uh, platform for multi-core, and we have support in Poly Platform on the runtime side. Uh, you have to deal with, um, of course, if you have different operating systems, how do you actually manage um, the, um, the communication when you have different uh, operating environments? And the same uh, for the, when you look at the interconnect. So, of course, many systems have shared memory. And um, in that case, you have to deal with shared memory and, and um, find the most optimal way to communicate uh, through through that medium, or if you have uh, something like rapid i o where you where you have to um, move data across a wire um, you you have to deal with that so that it is left to the implementations of mcapi and we did not specify in the standard how to deal with that. So that's interesting, so you deal you know by the name one would assume multi core is is within a single shall we say server, but you said across the wire as well. Does the MCAPI API also allow for communication, say, outside of a server across even something like Ethernet? Uh, yes, but with some uh, some qualifications. So uh, 
the, the target space that we're addressing is what we refer to as closely distributed multiprocessing. And uh, that generally would be a multiple cores on a chip or multiple chips on a board or any combination thereof. Um, we can go across a wire, but in our target area, we assume reliable transports. And if you look at MPI, you, you can certainly have a much more dynamic type of environment, and we assume a more static type of environment. But you can go across a wire. So we've, we have uh, drivers for running across TCP IP. Uh, but then you, you have to deal with um, a transport maybe being there or maybe not. So that adds a little bit to beyond what we have defined in MCAPI. Well, just wanted to add one thing. We also run across the wire when you might think of SRIO as being across a wire too, which would be more of a closely coupled system than across TCP IP. So we're talking about communicating between machines because we're instantly getting back because our business that Jeff and I work most time is high performance computing and we're generally concerned with communication between large numbers of cores. At what level does NCAPI on a normal system work though when you're just between cores? Is this like a, does it look like threads? Does it look like OpenMP or does it look higher than that? Um, uh, again, it can actually take, um, um, it can come in multiple shapes. So uh, we defined a node as a thread of execution, which could even be actually a, a, a hardware accelerator if it can execute a thread of, of uh, code. Um, so it depends a little bit on the implementation. And in some cases, you will find that it, it would be the equivalent of a process. So if you look in a, um, um, you know, a, a, a general purpose OS like Windows or Linux, it would just be a process. Whereas in a, a real-time system, it may be a core. And in some implementations, it could be a, a, a thread. So... Um, uh, th there is no one answer to that question, but but I, I think um, um, one thing is is uh, I would say common for all those uh, types of implementations is that they will touch the hardware um, in at the interconnect, and also uh, you need to have some kind of intercore signaling uh, or interchip, depending on if you're on on chip or off chip. Yeah, we, we might say it looks closer to uh, MPI and the fact that it's message passing versus uh, some of the other standards that you mentioned. And uh, that's what we look at uh, MCAP as being an, an ex not an extension of MPI, but shall we say the last set or last mile of MPI it runs down in the very end nodes of, of uh, a high-performance computing application. At least that's how we envision it. We designed it for uh, closely distributed computing. So when you're in multi-core or multi-core, as Sven mentioned earlier, accelerators environment, you can think of accelerators being an array of DSPs or an FPGA. Um, we're in a heterogeneous environment at this state, and then that's where OpenMP, is, as well as we understand it, doesn't work as well. And so MCAP can run down on the uh, heterogeneous side where you might be running Linux on, on the main core or general purpose core and then running MCAPI on the Linux piece as well as on the uh, the arrays of DSPs or FPGAs. Now let me throw in one extra thing here too that uh, MPI actually defines things similarly that um, all of MPI communication is defined in terms of an MPI process but the, the name process there is a little bit of a misnomer because it's just whatever the implementation defines as a process. It could very well be a thread. Um, back in the early days of MPI, uh, there were implementations that did MPI processes as threads, but those have kind of faded out, and almost everybody is kind of standardized on MPI processes as actual operating system processes. But just uh, that seems to be a similarity, at least between our two standards, if um, not necessarily implementation-wise. Mm, okay, that's interesting. So what about, so it sounds like you're kind of almost closer to the hardware, like it, it really is this embedded space or things that look like an embedded space where you've got different types of equipment you're going between while MPI traditionally focuses on more of a, 
it traditionally operates in an environment that's more homogeneous, and Jeff will probably interject with other examples, but practically, that seems like what happens a lot. <laughs> so could this help me avoid, like, a CUDA malloc, CUDA copy, stuff like that kind of thing? Like, this would be the standard way for getting and doing stuff on a GPU or other types of accelerators? Well, we are looking at uh, GPUs, to be honest with you. Um, but so far, we've been... Our implementations have been focused more on uh, more general, I wouldn't say general purpose, but uh, the DSPs, FPGAs, and main CPUs. Um, I think, yeah, maybe it would be in a sense, like you said, because we're all familiar with the message passing paradigm, and MPI uses message passing to move data, and so does MCAPI. And so uh, from that sense, our programmers are are knowledgeable in a message passing environment. You can use the same compilers and tools that you're familiar with. Um, it just adds um, an environment where you can move from homogeneous environments um, to heterogeneous environments. And, and we mentioned, I did mention heterogeneous environments in our last piece here. MCAPI does work well in an SMP uh, environment too, or homogeneous environment. It's just that this model allows you, the MCAPI model allows you to extend past the homogeneous SMP environment into a heterogeneous AMP type environment. And that's where we see the extension to MPI. And what do you define as AMP? Asynchronous multiprocessing, which, which is typically, uh, you might have, let's say, Linux on one side and maybe a, a, a real-time operating system or no operating system on the, on the receiving side, or we might call the hardware accelerator side. Okay. So... Okay. Let, Oh, go ahead. Why don't you go no, ahead? No, I was just going to say, the, the, uh, broadly, we look at AMP as, uh, um, it, it's not, you shouldn't equate it with homogenous or heterogeneous, even though uh, th there are, um, you know, um, connections. But we look at it as if, if you run so an application symmetrically or asymmetrically. If any core can do the job, or if you... Um, if you assign certain cores to do certain things. So your use of the word core is not just a traditional x86 type of core. You're talking any kind of core, like FPGAs and DSPs, like you mentioned, right? That is correct, yeah. Okay. All right, well, we've been batting around this a bit. We've been talking a little bit about MPI and MCAPI. Let, let's jump right into the heart of the matter. What was the, uh, th this white paper that you guys published? What was its message? Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so the intent was. So we've had some conversations with with uh, various uh, entities who who were asking us about MCAPI in in um, systems where they were using MPI, and um, I, I would say the the driving force for the conversations were. Uh, in systems where you may have had before a few cores on 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 one on the same chip, and next generations would go to many cores, and where you you didn't need to have the the richness and and robustness of MPI on every core, but you may want to use them as accelerators and have something more lightweight. That's kind of what started the conversations, and then. The the um, article uh, or white paper uh, w was published basically to um, propose a different, a few different ways that we could see this um, be done, and we wanted to, uh, I, I I guess, start a um, a debate between the the um, MPI community and MCAPI community to see if they're our opportunity. So it was kind of stirring the pot a little bit, and I think uh, that's why we're here talking. So when you're looking at using these technologies together or, you know, when you're evaluating an application, do you see MCAPI's interaction with MPI being more as a competitor or under the hood of MPI or an application developer would use MPI and MCAPI all in the same code base? Uh, well, at first glance, it may look like they're overlapping, but I, I don't really see it that way. I, I think that they are using the same programming model, but they have some 
different characteristics as we discussed before that I think would allow you to use that same type of programming model um, it, in, in, a, um, in a broader scope of systems. And so I see them as being complementary and I, I can see MCAPI being um, um, as uh, I think Ted described as he said the the last mile um, another way to describe it is, would be that you say that um, MPI is in the branch and the uh, in the trunk and the branches and and MCAP would be in the fingers where you just use MCAPI on an MPI uh, or with an MPI process to farm out workloads on other cores um, so that's I think how I see it but I'm sure there, uh, you know, it could be done in other ways. So then, do you see the strengths of the MCAPI API being more uh, smallness and elegantness and things like that that can fit into an embedded environment versus an MPI, which is a heavier weight with more bells and whistles and things like that? Uh, yes, I, I would. I think that's a good characterization. I think MCAPI. Um, is targeted at systems where you may have uh, severe resource constraints uh, and it may again have a variety of, of um, uh, I guess you could say heterogeneity at, at multiple levels where you have operating systems, you have types of cores and you have different transports. So, so I think it could be an, uh, uh, again at the, at the edge uh, as an ex, uh, and provide acceleration for MPI applications. Yeah, just one note: when uh, the Multicore Association started and MCAPI, they were targeting embedded systems developers, and um, and so that's what for the reason for the definitions that Sven gave earlier. But um, as Sven and I have been working through this, we've had conversations, you know, with embedded systems developers, of course, because that's where we're targeted. But uh, and the reason for this conversation is we've had discussions with people and cons uh, developers in the high-performance computing world. And uh, interesting enough, we're also having discussions with people in the desktop slash server world. So I think what's interesting in our marketplace here is that we're all struggling or looking for the same uh, solution for this problem of how do I deal with multi-core the, and, the, and the final edges here? And for how do we deal with things where cores get denser and denser or there's more cores on a chip? And... Um, and we believe, like you said, message passing is the best way to go here because it scales indefinitely. And um, so that's all I have to say on that part right now. <laughs> 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 okay, well, actually, let me ask you a question about message passing then because I'm an sure. MPI guy, obviously, and, and that's my bailiwick as well. Uh, common detractors of it say that it's ultra complicated. They they liken it to the assembly language of programming, and why aren't we using higher level concepts uh, rather than plain vanilla message passing and things like that? What do you guys say to that? Well, I uh, I look at it this way. So, um, uh, why are we having difficulties with multi core? And I think there are multiple reasons. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, a fundamental one is that the software environments that we're using for the most parts were uh, built with a single um, uh, execution unit in mind. And uh, so we have sequential languages and, um, and, and tools. Uh, and um, I think also the, I, I guess, with some exceptions in terms of you know, our vision is very parallel, but I think our thinking processes, human thinking processes, often sequential. And so I think we, we have a hard time realizing what's going on when you have a multitude of things happening at the same time. Um, so I think ultimately... Um, uh, we probably would like to have higher level concepts, but the reality is that we we are we have the things we have now, and I think that we will continue to uh, have to use the tools and, and environments that we have today for quite some time. Even, you know, we um, I think MPI has been around for quite some time, and MCAPI we're starting to to not be so young anymore. And it takes time for uh, standards or 
uh, new programming paradigms to to be uh, defined and to 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 um, proliferate in the market. So I think we need to find ways to deal with things now and and for the you know next several years. If I could take your question and just spin it a little bit, you know, you talked about new programming models or, or paradigms, and um, I think we're, they'll always be evolving, but I think one of the ways to approach the problem, too, is you can add tools to the environment to simplify the programming piece, and we see some tools in the modeling area, too, that help us do this, so it's not that we have to go back and and relearn new languages to programming, but if we can provide tools to bring make it easier for the programmers to the move applications into multi-core, um, that, that should solve the problem at this stage, and it would also give them a way to move quickly forward. And that's where poly, polycore software focuses. We have MCAPI support and a tool called PolyPlatform, which is the tools and runtimes piece. Then the tools actually simplify the development where they can uh, enable their program with MCAPI by just through all graphical interfaces, don't really have to write any code. And then they can lay out the, the, the uh, topology of, of their MCAP using graphical tools, and, and, the, and all the code is generated for you, or the majority of code is generated for you. So here you can move into a multi-core environment without really becoming a multi-core expert and learning all about MCAP. And I think that's where your paradigm from MPI comes back. It's like it's so hard to learn. So if we had tools for MPI that would make it easier to use and learn, I think that would solve the problem. So, interestingly enough, your answers actually are, are quite similar to that in the HPC and MPI realms that, uh, you know, MPI actually in the introduction to the standard says, we fully admit that we're middleware and we highly encourage upper level tools to be built on top of us. Um, and, and that is kind of our, our typical response is that, yeah, there's a lot of applications that write directly to MPI. Um, but there are actually quite a lot of middleware built on top of us or even applications built on top of MPI that the user has no clue. They just say, solve this FFT. A miracle occurs and MPI just happens to be used underneath. But uh, you know, from their perspective, all they did was issue a, a serial call and uh, magic occurred to make it happen in, in parallel. Yep. I, I, I think one other uh, thing to add to that. I think uh, that um, you know, Ted mentioned that message passing scales, and I think MPI has proved that because there are systems with many, many cores. Uh, I think the other part that I think is appealing is that uh, when you when you pass a message, you're handing off to another entity, uh, which makes it somewhat easier to deal with um, synchronization issues so uh, and plus that it's a passing message is communicating is something that's been done for a long time in in programming so looking at a traditional system right now where we've got 12 cores in a box but you know looking forward we may have you know say 48 cores in a typical node and you see MPI kind of running on everything and then NCAPI inside the box to get good performance, who do you see actually producing the MCAP implementation? Would it be, would it come with your MPI stack, or would it be provided by your hardware manufacturer that then MPI would plug into? That's a good question. <laughs> um, well, as we said, we provide the tools and the runtime, and we were working with silicon vendors right now for enablement on on their parts. Um, I guess it, it would be ideally it would be best if it ran under the covers, just the way MPI does. Yeah, I I think there's um, I don't I can't say that I can think of one one way, but I, I think it would make sense that um, um, a semiconductor vendor either provides uh, their their implementation or they work with a vendor like us and. And uh, um, also um, provide an integration between MPI and, and MCAPI. And um, as we had discussed before, uh, Jeff, that could be uh, through a, a bridge where you look at how do you go from MPI to MCAPI and, and, in, and the other direction. 
and that kind of routing routing between the two message passing layers, so to speak. Yes. And so, so I think um, you know we look at semiconductor vendors as our partners uh, because you know it's one thing to provide a, um, a a middleware that can do something, but if you want to do it really well, you typically need to work with the, the hardware vendor to to um, you know find a, 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 a an optimal implementation. Yeah, Jeff, I think. Uh Right now, we're typically working with the application developer, um, largely largely because it is in an embedded world here. But um, so in this case, like I would guess that the application developer would have to know something about what's down underneath, like or or at least the systems architect who's putting together this high performance computing model, know what's down, know the architecture, know what's down in the, in the uh, at the end node, as we'll call it, so it can be configured to run. Uh, like you said, this high-performance algorithm, and it would be completely hidden from the developer who just calls uh, some routine that says, go do this. All right, let's go off in a, in a slightly different direction. Um, after I posted my blog post, there were a number of comments uh, put on by, admittedly, people in the MPI community who probably have very little knowledge of MCAPI or how it works or anything like that. One of the things that they were harping on from your original article was what they interpreted was an insinuation that MPI is inefficient inside of a server. Um, could you just comment on that? Could you say, uh, you know, were you trying to imply that MPI is slower than NCAPI when we're talking between x86 cores? Or, you know, what, what was your intent there? Because I think that was misinterpreted. Yeah, so no, that uh, I don't think... Uh uh, we we meant to imply that MCAPI was better than MPI in that in that respect. So uh, we what you could do with um, um, M, well, I, let me first say this. So uh, doing a, a a movement in shared memory. I think that was the commentary about shared memory. Um, it really comes down to. Um, you know, if you have to move the data, you have to do it either with a soft copy or or with a DMA, and you may have to do some signaling between the cores. And I, you know, you can do that probably equally well in 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 both um, in, uh, uh, if within both in the stand implementations covering the either standard. Um, we I do think that in uh, given that MPI is so rich, you may not need MPI on every core in an implementation. And as I s- said before, that MCAP could be in the fingers. Uh, uh, th- I think that's really more what we were uh, trying to say. And and um, and you may be able to use different types of transport. So you know, some systems they have shared memory, and they have other network on chip type uh, interconnects, and that we could support that. So one of my initial inklings uh, was that, you know, is there something that MCAPI implementations do or does its simplified API lend itself to being faster, that there's less abstraction perhaps and, uh, you know, less overhead mandated by the API and therefore can operate all that much faster. But in the call that we had uh, a couple of days ago before we had this podcast recording, um, we kind of came to the conclusion that the performance between x86 cores of MPI versus MCAPI is going to be about roughly the same. Both of us have taken a lot of pains to to optimize those types of things. And really, um, the opportunities for working together are more interesting than layering one on top of the other for the cases that we already overlap. Is that a, a correct characterization of things that we talked about? Yeah, I, I would say so. Right. Okay. And so, for example, one of these things that might very well be interesting is, uh, like we touched on briefly before, acting as a router, right, between MCAPI processes on back-end FPGAs or something like that, or or vice versa, MPI running on back-end things, but using MCAPI as a transport to get to these dedicated uh, compute platforms and things like that. Part of the problem, though, is uh, there's no idea whether there's a lot of demand for that. And so it's kind of a chicken and egg problem. Until people start asking for it, it's, uh, we probably wouldn't have the resources to go experiment with it. Yeah, I think that's always the problem, Jeff. It, we're always in a chicken and egg, and 
Uh, you know, it's the question is, if you build it, will they come? <laughs> um, I think the the well, the reason we are even talking and the reason for the article is some of the discussions we've had with the MPI people who who actually contacted us because there was they they felt that as more cores are added, um, the MPI overheads would become come into play. I can't tell you if that's true or not, to be honest with you. But um, so. <laughs> well, I'll tell you that a lot of people in the MP- – sorry, I have to speak up here. Uh, sure. A lot of people in the MPI world are very concerned about that. And there are – on the implementer side, there is a lot of effort to make sure that that does not happen, that as we go up to 96 and above cores, that uh, MPI can be just as light and nimble as it is today on shared memory, if not more so. Um, I agree. Uh, well, I don't agree. That's that's why we got we got brought into this conversation. And, and the other part was is is it always going to be a homogeneous environment? Um, is there can, should we be adding processors or I'll call them compute engines um, at at the very edges of the network that could improve performance of certain types of algorithms, right? I mean, we know we yeah, can get that, better performance in DSPs and FPGAs for very specific uh, arithmetic operations. Yeah, that is a fascinating question. In the HPC community, there are some very strong proponents of accelerators of different flavors, FPGAs, GPUs, and so on. And there are others saying, nope, too much trouble, or at least too much trouble for my application set. Um, because homogeneous is so much easier particularly given the complexity already, I just don't want to go heterogeneous. But others saying, look, you build the right abstractions and heterogeneity is not that big of a deal. And it's a major win for my application set. So I agree with you that there definitely is opportunity to be had there. It needs to be quantified, um, perhaps, and and discretized in the market. But uh, that, I believe, also would be an excellent opportunity point for both of us. Yeah, I agree. Actually, that sounds like the speech we give. (laughs) 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 But I think there's some value to that. This is true, right? As we move forward, you can only get so much performance and so much density, right? And what are we going to do in the next and the next leg here to improve performance, but keep the, you know, all the all the costs that go into running computers around, you know, the heat, the energy, all that stuff. So, you know, is it just going to be ninety six homogeneous cores, or two hundred fifty six, whatever it is? Or will they be adding accelerators? Yeah, I think the um, uh, you know it's it's very true what you said about it's too much complexity, and what we see is that. Um, you know, I would say that the barrier to multi-core has been very high, uh, in in at least in some type of applications. People have been uh, sitting on the fence waiting for something to become better, and the the utilization of of what I would say acceleration, and I say that broadly, is only good if you have access to it. So we think that providing the the uh, programming models and, and tools, platforms that lower the barrier to entry to use those accel- acceleration engines, whatever they are, that's going to drive the, um, the adoption uh, because it, it's really hard to do some of these things. And so people choose the, the easy path and until there is a way to, to uh, choose another path that's not so hard, that the barrier is lower. So let's talk a little bit about the, some of the implementations of NCAPI. So you guys have a, a software stack right now. Um, what about some of the embedded vendors with the actual embedded hardware support? Who, who's actually got some of this stuff up and running? Well, we're, we're early in the game here, but um, the markets that are, are most interested, of course, is the telecom and networking markets. They've been using multiple processors and, and some some small level, low low density multi cores all along, and they they understand the problem of moving forward as as well as anybody else. So um, our most traction right now is in the networking world, but um, we also see though people are calling us from all ranges as we talked before. But staying in the embedded world, uh, we see areas of 
high-speed storage devices, or, or any, anywhere where you see large amounts of data flowing through and having to be processed. So we see them in like radars and military applications. We even see some areas in process control where they're not really using multi-core just yet, but what they're doing is they have multiple boards and they're anticipating the move to multi-core and doing more and more in their process control area. So they're looking at MCAPI as a way that they can they can uh, cha- change their programming paradigm now and then have multiple boards, multiple processors on a board, as well as multi-cores in the future. So um, we're seeing quite a range, too. Um, and as I said, basically, it's applications. Suitable applications are basically those that have data streaming and uh, we see video and audio applications as being those those types of applications also. So what about in some cases like uh, there's a number of these large distributed sensor networks that are going up that are constantly collecting information that in the HPC world, we've typically talked about ingesting the data from those systems, but a lot of those systems, a huge amount of their overhead is just collecting and transporting that data, and they do it using traditional TCP IP right now. Do you see MCAPI going in for these small sensor networks? Um, it's not an area that we've had too much um, uh, action in so far, but maybe um, maybe it's something that we should look at. Yeah, perhaps maybe if at the at the edge where there might be some aggregation of the data prior to moving it to uh, whoever is going to process the data. Maybe on the edge, that would be a good place for it. Well, let's run uh, real quick back here to uh, the standard side of things. What can you tell us? What's coming up in the multi-core association? So you mentioned some of the other working groups and so on. Is MCAPI itself going through any evolution? You said it's on version 2. Are there, is there going to be a version 3? What kind uh, of features are coming and so on? Yeah, so so we are um, working on, on the next version for MCAPI. I... Uh, I would like it to be a version 2.x rather than a version 3, uh, and uh, because there's a um, uh, there's a lot of work um, going into it, and I would like to see more evolutionary steps. Uh, so we're we're looking at um, um, areas of um, um, improving capabilities for buffer management and zero copy. And we're also uh, looking at um, interoperability. And we, we have a list of things, but those are the, the ones that are on, on, the, on the plate right now. And then uh, looking at the other standards. So MTAPI is um, um, in process of, of uh, defining the first version. And MRAPI is all, already released in the first version and currently there's no work going on in MRAPI at the moment um, but um, and but we, we will uh, we will have uh, new versions coming out um, over time and of course also we would want to um, get as much input as possible from the um, uh, community using the standards so uh, that's another reason to you know to, to, to let the version 2 sink in a little bit first be- before we move to the next version. It, it was released in uh, this spring. So now that we've got a bunch of information about what this is, where can people go and get more information or possibly get the spec? Uh, so uh, there's uh, 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 information about... Uh, uh, the Multicore Association can be found at uh, their website, which is multicoreassociation.org, and there's a dash in between Multicore and Association. And uh, uh, they can also find information about uh, the Polycore software products at um, uh, polycoresoftware.com. It's uh, all one word, Polycore Software. I think we have some links on the MCAPI website or the Multicore Association website also. Yes. Because for product supporting MCAPI and and uh, some of the new things that are coming out that we've been supporting. Okay. Well, Ted, Sen, thanks a lot for your time. Sure. Appreciate your time, gentlemen. We appreciate your time. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Brock.